So a good friend of mine is a photographer, and she's actually going to be my wedding photographer coming up extremely soon. Like, it's, it's really close. But anyway, she came to me and was wondering what would be the best option for her as far as backing up all the photos she does and takes for her photography business. Right now, she's just using a bunch of external hard drives, and so I steered her towards building a NAS. And obviously, she could have bought a NAS system, but she wanted a RAID 5 array so that she had some redundancy, and so I kind of steered her towards building it, and the primary reason is because I wanted to do it as part of my business to help her business out kind of thing, and it ended up saving her a little bit money in the long run because a lot of the RAID 5 enclosures are kind of pricey, but the other thing that I wanted to do that she didn't realize is from company to company, so my company, Next Tech News, to her company, Marston Photography, I wanted to make kind of a unique case for her company. And she kind of focuses on natural photography, as in like the backdrops of all of her photos are usually very nature driven and stuff like that. A great example is during my engagement shoot with her, she actually used this massive old oak tree as the backdrop to our photos, and they look stunning. I highly recommend anyone near Gainesville, Florida to definitely check out her website, which I will have linked down below, but she's a great photographer and is always looking for some new clients. But anyways, let's move on to the build. I wanna show you guys exactly what I did. I built an entirely wooden case from scratch and had an absolute blast making it. So I wanna show you exactly how I did that, as well as what I would change if I were to do it again. So these are all the parts that I chose for this build. All of them will be linked in the description down below if you wanna check any of them out. So the first thing I did in designing this case was actually build all the components that were going to go inside of it because that gave me an idea of how to organize everything. I actually just like literally put the motherboard here and the power supply here and then the hard drive cage here and the reason I did all that was so that I had an idea of my layout before I even went into designing it. In version 2, what I ended up doing was changing the front design. I ended up not liking all the holes I had drilled into the front of it, because it didn't really match the rest of the design of the case, like all the other side panels had a different kind of grill. So then I ended up moving the grill from all the other side panels to the front, and I ended up making all the walls a little bit thicker. Originally the case was going to be 8th inch thick wood and I decided after some testing that that was going to be too thin so then I switched it to quarter inch wood which ended up working out perfectly. In version number two I also ended up adding all these dado joints that you see and this was my way of combining all the panels together. They all kind of went into these slots then with some glue and that's what held it together and added some rigidity to the structure. After finishing designing the case, I laid all the panels out as an inventor drawing and exported it as a DXF vector file. Then I opened the DXF in vCarve Pro and programmed the CNC cuts and toolpaths with it. If anyone wants the files to try to replicate this case, I will have them linked down below, but please listen to the changes I would make at the end of this video.
So step one in actually building your own wooden case was to just let the CNC table do its thing and cut out all the panels. Step two was just to sand and file the panels so that they were a little bit more cleaned up. Step three was to glue the panels together. Step four was to putty in any cracks or blemishes and then to sand those putty spots after the fact. And just take a look at this case. A little bit of a clear epoxy coating all the way around and it just looks stunning in my opinion. So after the case was completed, all I really had left to do was to do the build. So I hope you guys enjoy this time lapse of me creating a NAS.
So if I were to build this case again, I would definitely change a couple of things that I built this time. You might have noticed that you didn't see in that time lapse me add the power connector, the little extension cable in there, the slot for you to actually plug in the AC power, and you didn't see me drill the hole for the power button. And the reason is I actually forgot the camera when I went to the shop to do those two things. And the reason I had to do those two things is because I didn't think those through when I was designing the file. I should have had those included, those cutouts included in the router file, but I didn't because I completely forgot how you would turn on the computer and how you would get power to it. So I had to add those in by hand later. And that's why you didn't see it in the time lapse. You also didn't see it in me designing it in the file because I completely forgot to do that. So if you, if I were to redo it, or if you were to take these files that I have down below and do it yourself, I would highly recommend adding that into the router file so that you don't have to cut it by hand later because that's just a pain. And a couple other things that I would change is the little screen I had in the side of the panel. That was actually, it was a cool idea. I thought it's, the idea is that you can change settings on the NAS and all that kind of stuff without having to go plug it in to another screen. So it's a built-in screen and it had that little ribbon cable that goes into the back so that there's no real cables that you can see from outside the case. They're all internal. But the problem with that is the way I designed the, pan the side panels, they slide in and out. And because there's a screen mounted to it now, that side panel can't slide out. So the way you have to get it out right now is kind of, it's a little bit smaller than the opening. So you can kind of push it to one side and pop it out. But that's not really the most ideal solution. I really should have made like a slot for the screen to come out with the side panel at the bottom so that you could still just slide it out. So again, if you guys were trying to replicate this, I would recommend changing that or just ditching the screen completely. That's always an option for sure. I'll probably be doing more cases like this in the future now that I have access to a CNC machine. And let me know in the comments below if, if you guys have any other ideas that I could do on the CNC machine. I'm definitely trying all sorts of unique things on it and I hope you guys enjoy the comment coming up soon regarding that CNC machine. Like I said earlier in this video, I have a wedding coming up so I will be taking a small hiatus off of Next Tech News for a couple of weeks while I'm on my honeymoon and all of that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please check out marstonphotography.org down below if you're interested in any of her photos or anything like that. She'll have photos of her case up on her website probably pretty soon. If not, I'll be posting them on my own social media, and I th believe she will be as well. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Zach with Next Tech News. See ya!